<clears throat> but nevertheless, all that day, it kept on hurting, and the pain became intense. So I took another BC, and I said, something that's not right. And I thought, you know, driving a truck, well, I was sitting in that spot too long. So I kind of adjust my seat hmm. in my truck, and uh, it still would hurt. So I would move to the side. I would raise the seat up. I would raise it down. Uh, it still would hurt. Oh, my. So uh, the Sabbath morning, I was scheduled to teach a Sabbath school class in a church. And, man, I was in so much pain that I couldn't even, I couldn't even stand up. So I tried to, to continue on to teach without them knowing that I was in pain. So finally, the Sabbath school was over, and I sat down and waited on divine worship. And brothers and sisters, I was in so much pain that, you know, I started laying on the, on the pew. Then I got back up because it was uncomfortable that way. So I turned to the other side, and it was like it was uncomfortable that way. So I would get up and stand up, and it was uncomfortable standing up. I was so in pain that I said, I can't stay here for divine worship. So I got in my car with my truck, and uh, a 45-minute drive into home was two hours. I could not for the life of me stop that pain. So finally, when I got home, I took a Tylenol. And see, excuse me, what that help? So I lay, I lay down, and it's like, every spot that I would lay, it's like it was the pain intensified. Mm. So finally, I drove myself to the emergency room. Note this, anytime a man drive himself to the emergency room, he's in pain. Uh. So I drove myself to the emergency room. Uh. My wife was at work. I didn't want to trouble her. And so when I was in the waiting room waiting for them to call my name, I was literally leaning. I, I had my legs stretched out. And you know how you're doing setups or exercise. That's the, that position gave me comfort. And now uh, the, the nurse came and she said, sir, you okay? I said, no, ma'am. I said, I'm in pain. I said, I'm in pain. I need some help. I need, I'm in pain. Uh, so mm. finally they rushed me in the back. And uh, the doctor came back. He said, sir, what's bothering you? I said, there's a pain in the lower part of my back. I said, I can't stop it. He said, from a scale of 1 to 10, what is it? I said, it's, it's a 10. I said, sir, I can't talk to you. I can't talk to you. I need something to stop this pain. I can't talk to you. I said, I'm in pain. So, of course, they went out. They came back. And they gave me some morphine. Oh, so it kinda, they kind of uh, minimized the pain just for about 10 minutes. And they came back and said, how do you feel, Mr. Whitman? I said, I'm in pain. I said, I'm in pain. I don't know what's going on. So the, the doctor came in and he uh, ordered a uh, CT scan to find out what was that pain in me like that. So... Uh, they took a CT scan, and when they came back to the room, they said, Mr. Wheels, you have a cyst on your kidneys, nine centimeters. Oh. Ooh. So big that it was touching other organs of my body, and that's where the pain was coming from. So they sent me to a specialist to find out what was that cyst on my kidneys? And they took a biopsy of that of that cyst, and they found out that I had kidney cancer. And brothers and sisters, <clears throat> I want you to know that that diagnosis killed me. I actually died in the hospital. They told me that uh, I have to see an oncologist to do closer research of how they're going to deal with this cancer. So I went to an oncologist, and they did a body scan. They did uh, MRI. They did an MRI standing up. They 
seen the MRI laying down, and uh, they told me I was at stage four. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and uh, I had to laugh to keep from crying. So they said, Mr. Williams, uh, we're going to talk to our staff. We're going to get the chief surgeon involved. And we're going to get the, uh, the supervisor of oncologists involved. And we're going to find out what is actually going on with you. And we'll get back with you. I said, yes, sir. So when I got home, I cut on 3ABN. And I was just listening. And the first day, it didn't bother me. The second day, it hit me. It hit me. I said, I'm going to die. And I got so angry with God. I was angry. And I said, Lord, out of all of my siblings, you know, I don't drink, I don't smoke. I'm trying to live a Christian life. I'm preaching everywhere. Why well, do I have this cancer? And I was so upset. And my wife came in and I wiped my tears. I didn't want to see me cry. And he said, my spirit was down. It was so despondent because I can understand how did I get this cancer. And that's why y'all didn't see me for a while because I didn't know what to do. I didn't know who to, who to tell, who to talk to. I just stayed away and talked to God. So when my wife went to work the next day, I was in the room and God gave me an opportunity to vent. And I just told him how I felt. Sometimes we have to tell God how we feel. Uh, yes. We have to tell him the truth. Lord, I'm angry. Why did this happen to me? Why did you allow this to happen to me? You know what we say. I do this, I do that. And God allowed me to tell him how I felt. From the depths of my heart, I told him how I felt. That I didn't like it. That I was upset. For three hours, I did what Peter did. I cried bitterly. Okay. I wept. Pastor yeah. Williams, uh, yes. sorry to uh, interrupt <laughs> you. There's a shaking. I don't know if it is from my side. Uh, is your screen I, steady? No, uh, I see a shaking. I don't know what's going on. I'll try and turn your camera on and off. See I can see you well. How did you do that? Turn your camera on. Your video. You the, video st the video part. Video. It stopped. Did it stop on your end? Yes. Yeah. I, I was worried because I thought it was... I don't know where it was coming from. But anyway... Uh, there okay, you go. Let, me, let me go back. You said stop the video. Stop the video and then, and then turn it back on. Uh, yeah. Okay. Come back on now. Let's see. No, it's Not good. Right. Well, hopefully it doesn't. I was able to... I, I, I'm going to have to get that fixed because I did a crusade uh, meeting in uh, Canada 
and it was doing the same thing, so I'm going to have to take it to the shop okay. and get it fixed. All right, go ahead. Bear with me. Yeah, we'll bear with you. Bear I was talking to God about why this, why that. I was very upset. And God showed me if I could just be transparent right now. God showed me myself. <clears throat> showed me that I was living two lives. Huh. Mm. He showed me some secret sins that I had that nobody knew. And when he showed me that, I broke down and cried. Oh, I cried, church. Because the doctor told me that I didn't have long to live. What do you do? Mm. When the doctor tells you you're not going to live. You see, sometimes God allows things because we're not serious with him. We want microwave prayer answers. <clears throat> so God allowed something to happen for me to see myself. And I want you to know, ladies and gentlemen, that when I prayed seriously and honestly, because when you know you're going to die, that's when you get serious. When you know you're not have, you don't have long to live, you become serious with God. And it's a shame that we have to get on our deathbed or something got to happen or we have to lose a child or we have to become prognosis with cancer or whatever disease for us to get serious with God. Oh. Mm. And I want you to know that when I prayed seriously and honestly, we need to ask God to teach us how to pray prayers that reach the very heart of God. <clears throat> Excuse me. <clears throat> and I want you to know that when I prayed, the pain left. Amen. And saints, I had not had that pain in two years. When I go to the doctor, they said, Mr. Williams, are you sure you Mr. Williams? Because people was coming to the cancer treatment center in wheelchairs, throwing up all over the place. So he said, when, they, when, the, when the oncologist and the, and the general a surgeon and the chief of staff came. They talked to me and said, Mr. Will, we're going to try this medicine on you called, uh, I, I forgot what the name of but it's uh, immunity. It's like chemotherapy. It's called in, immunity, something like that. Mm -hmm. And they was going to give me four doses. The first dose I took, I was okay. The second dose I took, I was okay. It was the third dose that I took that it, it attacked my bowels and gave me colitis. I don't know if you know what colitis is. But colitis attacks your bowel system. I was going to the bathroom 13 times a day. Wow. I counted. Every time I get off the toilet and get back in the bed, Five minutes later, I had to go back, and you talk about excruciating pain. And I would be on the toilet, and I said, Lord, help me, Jesus. Lord, Jesus. Oh, God, I'll be trying to use the bathroom, and it just give me just so much pain. I said, Lord, you don't have to take away the pain. Just give me strength to bear it, Lord. So I was praising God through the pain. Mm. And it got to a point where I couldn't hold my bowels no more. And I would just mess on myself. Woo, Jesus, you talking about the most embarrassing part of your life when you just sit there and you can't hold your bowels. And my wife would have to clean me up.
so I love that woman. That woman cleaned me up. I got so skinny that I was in the room dying. My wife said, baby, you're going to have to eat. I said, I don't want to eat. Every time I eat, I would throw up. I couldn't eat nothing. So she would feed me. And she would sing Amazing Grace. She would read the Bible to me. Uh, uh, I was so sick. I went back to the doctor. I told the doctor, I said, I'm not taking this medicine no more. Mm, strong medicine. I said, I'm not taking it. So I told my wife, how the doctor said, Mr. Whip, you don't take this medicine. He said, the cancer can go somewhere else and it's going to get larger. It's going to get larger and you can die. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I told my wife, I set her down, I said, baby, I'm not taking the medicine no more. <laughs> I said, if I die, let me die holy. Listen to me, church. It's not how you go down, it's how you come up. You can go down with cancer, you can go down with high blood pressure, you can go down with, with diabetes, it's not how you go down, it's how you come up. Did you make it right with God? So I start calling people that I thought I hurt. And I made arrangements to fly to Dallas. And I talked to the president of the conference that I come out of. I had all planned. I'm going to let Dr. Bullard do my funeral here in Georgia. And then I'm going to have my family to fly me to Texas. That city temple where I was raised, where the church that I was ministered. And I'm going to have the conference president to do my eulogy. I wrote my eulogy down. I called my family together. And they were just crying because nobody knew I had cancer. They was crying. They was crying because I planned my own eulogy. I made up my mind I wasn't going to take no more medicine. Mm -hmm. I'm going to die. Let me die. And then all of a sudden, God healed the colitis. I began to have a natural bowel movement. Then, to make a long story short, I don't know how much time I got, but somebody told me about a place called Yuji Pine. Yuji Pine is like wild wood like ministry, something like that. Uh, a program that deals with natural herbs. So I asked the lady, I said, ma'am, I said, uh, the doctor said I have kidney cancer, but I don't have no kidney cancer. She said, well, Mr. Williams, uh, I have your record. It says you have kidney cancer. I said, ma'am, I don't have no kidney cancer. I said, but I'm coming to New Japan anyway. I said, how, if I did have kidney cancer, how are you going to heal me? She said, we're going to burn it out of you. <laughs> In other words, those hydro, uh, heat, hot, hydro uh, baths and all those things that they do there. So I was there 17 days. And from there, I became a, on a plant-based diet. They weigh the boondocks. They're away from the city. You can't even sneak and go in big time because it's so dark in the woods, you can't find your way out of there. <laughs> <laughs> so I went through the hydrotherapy. They gave me herbs, which I have those herbs right now. They ain't about to have cancer. I know what to do. I know how to talk to you. I know what to give you. So I went through the, the, the treatment for 17 days, the best 17 days of my life. One thing about those people that use Japan, they're very spiritual minded. The atmosphere feel like you're in heaven. The food is excellent. The treatment, they pray for every time they give you a treatment. The grounds are holy. I had an 
experience with God. So when I left Eugene Pine, when I left Eugene Pine, I noticed that I didn't have to take blood pressure medicine no more because my blood pressure was healed. <laughs> so I didn't have no way of knowing about the cysts of my kidneys unless I go through a CT scan. At this time, the cysts grew from 9 centimeters to 13. Grew. Just growing. So after the 17 days of huge pine, plant-based diet, no dairy products, no sweets. I took my first CD, CT scan. And when I took the scan, it took two weeks to get the results. And when the results came back, I'm cancer free. God healed. Hey. Now, I want to read. I want to read something to you that we overlook, and it's in Isaiah. Get your Bibles and turn to Isaiah thirty-six. This is a familiar story of Isaiah, or uh, Hezekiah rather, was sick unto death. You know the story? Yes. And the prophet Isaiah told him to get his house in order. Because he's going to die. Because he's going to die. You remember the story? Yes. Bill? Uh, where am I? I think it's Hezekiah. Uh, what, where is that? Oh, here it is. Hez Hez 38. In those days when Hezekiah was sick unto death, Isaiah the prophet, the son of Amos, came to him and said unto him, Thus said the Lord, Set thine house in order. In other words, not his physical house, but his spiritual house. Saints, if we just be honest with ourselves, you know, we always debate about is the 144,000 literal or symbolic. If we just take an inventory of ourselves, if Christ would come tonight, would you go to heaven? We have so much junk in our house. You got people have anger issues. You got people don't love nobody. You got people that have unforgiving spirit. God told Hezekiah, get your house in order. And everybody knows what's in their house. We can go to church, we can praise God, we can sing, we can do all these things, but we know what's in our house. But that's not the point that I want to make. The point I want to make is that, look at verse 9. The writings of Hezekiah, king of Judah, when he had been sick, he was recovered of his sickness. Listen to me, church. Not only Hezekiah prayed, not only Hezekiah prayed, set his house in order. But it's something else that we forget that Hezekiah did. Look at verse 21. For Hezekiah had said, I mean, for Isaiah had said, let them take a lump of figs and lay it for a plaster upon the ball, and he shall what? Recover. So if I had a sermon 
it tonight. I will entitle it, Don't Forget the Leaves. God has made it possible through health and natural remedies to heal us. So not only Hezekiah had to pray, not only Hezekiah had to set his house in order, but don't forget the leaves. Hezekiah had to use figs to put on the ball in order to recover. Notice what Ellen White says concerning that. Those who seek healing by prayer should not neglect to make use of the remnant agency within their reach. It is not a denial of faith to use such remedies as God has provided to alleviate pain and to add nature in her work of restoration. It is no denial of faith to cooperate with God and to place themselves in the condition most favorable to recovery. You see, we don't want the leaves. We want instant, instantaneously healing. We want God to move the pain now. But don't forget the leaves. Did you not know that God healed some people instantaneously in the Bible? The woman that had the issue of blood, when she touched the hem of his garment, how soon was she healed? Instantaneously. But a lot of times, God don't heal us immediately. He waits. He tests our faith. He brings us back to the help of love. Don't forget the leaves. She goes on to say, we have sanction of the word of God for the use of eight remedy agencies. Hezekiah. King of Israel was sick, and a prophet of God brought him the message that he should die. He cried unto the Lord, and the Lord heard his servant and sent him a message and that 15 years should be added to his life. Now one word from God would have healed Hezekiah instantly, but special direction was given. Let them take a lump of figs and lay it for a plaster upon the ball, and he shall. Recover. Don't forget the leaves. God has made it possible for us to use the leaves. Some of us don't like silence. You know, it is interesting that the Sunday people don't want the Sabbath and the Adventist people don't want the night. It's really sad. People get upset with you when you talk about your kitchen. You know why? Because they are not willing and ready to give up a certain meat because it tastes good. I was the same way. When we have these, uh, what do you call it, Sister Williams, uh, these conventions, when we have these conventions and these, these, um, uh, uh, gatherings and some said do you want are you a vegetarian or not a vegetarian we got vegetarian food we got non-vegetarian food we are so greedy that we take chicken or oxtail and hide it up under the side because we don't want the diet we don't want the leaves and that's why many of us sick today because we're not heeded to god's instruction we want healing. We want the pain to leave. But we don't want the herbs. We don't want the salad. We don't want the garlic. We don't want the ginger. We don't want the cayenne pepper. So we fight against God. And many people have left the church because we are not healed 
because God has not answered us. But when we take heed to the instructions and don't forget to leave as our close, God will instantaneously heal you like he did me. He healed me of kidney cancer. Will he heal everybody else? I don't know. Will he heal you instantaneously? I don't know. But throughout the Bible, mm -hmm. God have healed some instantaneously and some he did. Church, don't forget <clears throat> the leaves. Any questions? Amen. Well, we certainly want to thank you, uh, Pastor Williams, for that riveting account. Mm -hmm. I, <laughs> you had us on the edge of our seats. <laughs> we, can, we could go through the motions and the emotions with you, but um, <laughs> I just let open up for people to to ask questions or make their comments and um, and get it rolling. Yes. But first I want to ask you if um, about the cyst. If they wanted to do surgery to remove the cyst. I don't know how the cyst disappeared. Mm. Only thing I did was change my diet. Uh, one thing I learned at New Japan, uh, heat oh. destroys cancer. Okay. So if you have cancer, go into water as hot as you can stand it and let the heat fall on it. Oh, oh okay. 30 40 minutes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It is destroyed the cancer. The doctors are baffled. Baffled, <laughs> yes. I get the man come with stage four cancer and now cancer free. Mm. Amen. Amen. Wow. Yes. That's so I have some teas in my cabinet strictly for cancer. And I have some powder. Uh, that I can tell you uh, that will keep cancer cells from forming, or if you do have cancer, it is shrinking. Okay. All right. So the next step is to get this all in a book. <laughs> <laughs> Oh in a goodness. book, the That's book, right. the book, write like a book, <laughs> Pastor, write a book. <clears throat> oh my, my, my. Well, you know, I was going to talk about my story. God that took away the prison story gave me a new testimony. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> well, we hope you come back. On this line, know about the prison experience. Uh, oh. like God miraculous delivered me from prison. Mm. God has always been with me, Doc Williams. Yes. Yeah, yeah. And uh, sure. he, he stayed with me even in my weakest moments, even in, in cancer. Mm. He heard my cry. No, he does. And I'm he very does. grateful. Amen. And we are grateful too. Uh, well, most, let me see. Um, <clears throat> all right. Anybody that. Uh, <laughs> In here. Yeah. Uh, dear, um, just after um, Dr. Speak here, I give some comment about my um, my poor workers. Well, a package a package was delivered for me, <laughs> and one in part uh, the package was delivered delivered to my workplace, and I came and I came and um, just as I was talking about one of the poor workers, I was showing. Pastor will have, have his testimony about um, the cancer and his recovery along with Christ. Uh -huh. So he asked me to bring the presentation to him. Yeah, Rickard. Brother William? Yes. <coughs> he said he say I should send 
the presentation to him. So I will just when I when I do the presentation to him, must be important particular day. Well, it's it's I'm part of the presentation just a little a, a little bit much. So, um, a little, uh, uh, seems to give a, a, a speech on his recovery, but this is a double portion. And I can rest assured that I can use the same method because um, throughout the year, you know, uh, everyone knows about my daughter and her illness. This morning, um, my wife had to rush, rush her to the hospital because um, she, she was having a cold and um, along with most issues that keep triggered, triggered up the, the seizure. But um, when, she, when she went to the doctor, the doctor said she has to, he has to do another follow-up on her and so forth. But, you know, we continue to pray and, you know, keep holding on because with my daughter's situation, she has been sick for a long time and many, many um, methods. Um, we went to vegetarian doctor. We went to um, herbal, the um, herbal doctor, which prescribed some herbal medicine and fear of food. Even um, brother William, um, even brother William, give me a, a, a remedy which I tried, and you know they see that this can still continue. Well, mm -hmm. it's just a test, not fit, and keep me going and don't. We, uh, I know for sure, by the grace of God, I will reach the point where I give up. All right, thank you, Pastor. Uh, Brother Williams, yeah. let me uh, let me uh, show you some of the things that, some of the herbs that a person can use when they have cancer. Yes. This is one of them here. It's called RP6. Oh. Look at that. <clears throat> IP6. Okay. Okay, write it down. It says IP6 on the inside. Uh -huh. the door. Okay. Yes. Another herb you can get that shrink cancer. Oh, can you show it again, please? Can, yeah. can you show that one again, please? Sure. Uh, if you want it, show that again. Can you see it? <coughs> oh, IP6. Okay. The other one. That shrink cancer is this. What is that? Down the line. Dillion root pot. Hold on, let me click this thing again where you can see. I got to go get this fixed. Larry Anna of Valeria. Valeria? There it is. Can you see it? Down the line. Oh, down the line? Yes. Uh, what I'll do, uh, you send me some Another picture. One. Yeah, you can do that, but then you send me some pictures so I can post it on the chat. Right, another one. I'm at, okay, I'll just put it on the chat and you can share it there too. Can you see that? Oh, come this way, come the other way. No. Come the other way, yeah, come there. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> now you're in the corner. I, I have to send you the picture. Yes. And because my, I don't know. Maybe can you see this one? No, it's shaking now. So what I'll right, do... I have to send you the pictures. But all of these medicines that I take, or the herbs rather, that I take, is shrink the cancer. So I'm cancer free. Amen. And remember, brothers and sisters, <coughs> that God moves according to your faith. It is Satan's job to make you discouraged. Mm. When you discourage, it takes away your healing. It takes away God's hand. Yeah. Be patient. Don't forget the leaves. Don't Where forget. Else? All right. Anybody else? All right, quick. All right. Well, <clears throat> we are so so grateful. We are so so grateful. Ah. Uh, I know this experience is a blessing, although you suffer, you suffer pain and distress and inconvenience. And it, I know uh, <clears throat> I'm a testament of um, 
what sickness can do to your body it uh, it's like a punishment it's like a torture and I'm glad doc, um, Dr. Williams that you <clears throat> have been so transparent because this is what God has put in you and you share because by this you are helping and you are also helping somebody to prevent because prevention is better than cure and if you have gone through the experience and is willing to share then all we have to do is use those things take those precautions and by God's grace we will not have to face it but if we do face it we can try that route so God bless you, God bless you and your dear wife and I hope you'll come again because <clears throat> as you know that uh, Joseph, he spent 13 years and I know it's a miracle that got you through and <clears throat> I have no doubt that there are those of us who by hearing that also will share to somebody because we know Christ says that we <coughs> will be judged because we didn't go to the prison. We, we didn't go to the prison, we didn't feed the hungry and so on and so forth. So I know that is close to Christ the things that we do for the less fortunate or those who have had these experiences so they should not be forgotten and I know I give you that as a as a part of your testimony and I am grateful <coughs> as you said he takes that one and give you this one this is quite mm -hmm. powerful mm -hmm. and it serves the purpose of um, our topic here, Prosper in Health. Prosper in Health, so... <coughs> Dr. Wheat, let me just say, sir, yeah. that if you look and you read your Bible, um, it took um, 12 years for God to heal the woman who had the issue of blood. Twelve. Yes. Twelve. It was 12 years. And once she touched him, she was healed when? Immediately. Yes. Indeed. Another person that took 18 years. Uh -huh. And another one that took 38 years. The man at the pool of Bethesda. Yes. So God does not always heal instantaneously. Mm. He, he, not, he does not always remember. Uh, in creation, uh, the Bible says, In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. And the earth was without form and void, and dark was upon the face of the deep, and the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the water, and he said, let there be light. Instantaneously, light appeared. Instantaneously. But how many days did it take him to create the earth? <coughs> Six. Mm -hmm. Or seven. Six. So he could have created the world in one day. Instantaneously. That's right. So God does not work all the time in healing instantaneously. Amen. There is a part we have to play. Say that again. <laughs> I said there's a part that we have to play. Amen. Because in the part that we have to pay, play, we don't want. We don't want the leaves. Discipline. Mm -hmm. We don't want the leaves and we don't want to be disciplined. And, and I believe that God healed me because I was willing to to accept what he showed me about myself oh. and repented of what he showed me about myself. Do you think some pastor going to get up and tell you that they live two lives? You think some evangelist going to get up and tell you they had a secret life? No. Oh, okay. And that's why many of them suffer. Confess. And diseases. Oh, boy. Because they got a whole they rather hold the truth oh, and unrighteousness. You got people on this line hold the truth oh. and unrighteousness instead of telling God about what's going on.
going on with them that nobody sees. Mm. Oh, boy. And I learned that your mind make you sick. Yes. Yes. Your mind <laughs> make you sick. I'm grief. Oh, woe is me. I don't know. God ain't heard me. God, I don't know if you listening to me. Uh. I learned that you should find that when you are stressed, when you worry, when you have anxiety, you open up your mind for diseases. Uh, that's right. Yes. yes. Ministry of healing and all those tell you that. Yes. You know, some people say, Dr. Williams, you make me sick. That's uh, what you said. Your mind makes you sick. It does. You have to transform your mind. Transform by the renewing of your mind. That's where you can get the healing. I'm sorry. I just need to say that because you have people discouraged yes. on, on the line because God has God has not instantaneously work instantaneously. Yeah. Work instantly. Inst instantaneously. Mm -hmm. yeah. Some he down twelve years. Some he healed in eighteen years. Some he healed in thirty eight years. What did you do? What what part have you played? Hezekiah had to play a part. He had to he had to look to the to the wall, he had to pray, he had to set his house in order, and he had to use the leaves. Amen. That's how he got fifteen years added to his life. And it's called one word. Look, uh, I tell you, let me um, see, I have some friends here, sometimes you call their names there, they might feel uh, brave enough to step out, uh, Z5156CC, <coughs> Anne Maria I phone, I think you spoke already, Sister Michelle, good to see you, mm -hmm. uh, <coughs> do you have... A, but I call your name if that makes you a little braver. <laughs> I hope, because those those two lines there that that you said last, those are precious precious remedies. Mm -hmm. If we think about it, tell God, acknowledge to God that this is all you are. Mm -hmm. That is, it helps you. Whole, it's your whole, whole, your mind, your body, your your social, your spiritual. Those are remedies for illness. Now you know sometimes we talk about the uh, <clears throat> what we do, what we do to get this better and get that better. But that right there is powerful beyond what we can even imagine. Mm -hmm. Yes, <clears throat> just and wait. Wait, I say, upon the Lord. Lisa, Sister James, uh, I, I, um, I just last week I was saying, Sister James, that I am going to ask Sister James for a testimony. <laughs> so, <laughs> if you have a thought, I know um, I love to hear you speak. Uh, Sister James is really doctored. Dr. Lisa. Uh, so, <clears throat> anybody here? I see Sister Vivia. You have a question? Mm How -hmm. about our friend back, way back to, to Eden? Eden Ministry. <laughs> okay, let's get him a, a minute. Good evening. I don't, really, I don't really have a question right now, but I have just been riveted listening to both testimonies. 